We're at the Pro Am Training Center with uh, Vinny Michalis. Michalis. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to try that again. But uh, so, how are you doing today, by the way? I'm doing pretty good. Just finishing class and kind of tired from traveling from Vegas to uh, pretty much every weekend now. Yeah. Um, so we read online that you recently told uh, five ounces of pain that you were assured that you'd have your, your training job back at uh, Team Quest. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened with that? Well, I had just a problem with management at Team Quest. Like, uh, after I got out of the show, after I got out of the Ultimate Fighter, uh, I decided to do like, my own thing, had my own managers. And uh, when I told Team Quest, they were not so happy about it. And uh, they said that I could stay there if I paid my managers. Not to make it if I paid my managers, but they said I had to pay them guaranteed, so there's no like, oh, you, you can pay like 10% uh, to your manager and pay 10% to us. They want to take like 20% of my purse, and that would be like kind of way too much because I, I, I was already paying my managers. So I said, like, well, there's no way, you know, that's the way too much money like, for my purse. I don't make that much money. I don't even know if I'm mean, making any money like finding UFC or not. So. so I decided to leave. It's not a big deal, it's just management stuff. I don't have any problem with team class fighters or team class like. Managers or anything, just it was my decision. Just leave. Um, did you talk to anyone like uh, either Gabe or Jesse uh, about their experiences on the Ultimate Fighter kind of going into it? Uh, pretty much like Gabe and Jesse, they were the guys that put me on the show, you know, they were my connections with the producers and, uh, and stuff. So as soon as I found out that they, they're gonna open like uh, Ultimate Fighter for two or I told those guys to make some calls, and I think Jess and Gabe they helped them a lot. Um, looking back, if you could go back uh, and change anything, would you have changed anything? Well, not about, about not, the show, not, no, not about the show, but like uh, everything that happened afterwards when you came back. No, I wouldn't change anything. I haven't had to complain about anything. Training, management, like my managers are great. Like training has been great, so I haven't had to complain about it. So obviously you can't say a whole lot about uh, what's going on on the show, but can you tell us um, anything that's kind of surprised you in terms of like training? Did you did you pick up a lot along the way, or is it more of uh, the experience and getting the expo exposure? Uh, the experience was great for me. I wasn't the kind of guy who was looking for the exposure. I don't know if you guys watched the first uh, episodes. I barely show. I barely, I barely talk to the confessional. So I was there more, much more for like the contract and for training and fighting. And uh, for me, it was just like a great experience because like. Here, like out of the house, and just train, eat, and sleep anyway. So I was having everything for free <laughs> in Vegas. So it was just like better for me. Does it bother you that you weren't showing a whole lot, or is that your preference? Oh, honestly, I don't care. I wasn't. I wasn't looking for camera attention. You know, the guys were doing like some pranks and doing like stupid things just to get some attention. I wasn't like, one of those guys. Um. So so far through the episodes that they've shown, uh, so they go back to the house always, and they show people drinking a lot. So Junie. Junior Brownie's drinking a lot. Um, is that something that, that bothers you when you're in the house, actually, or is it something that you just kind of look past? And Honestly, like when Junior was really entertaining, you know, the, the house is pretty boring. You have nothing to do there. Just like, you know, you don't have a TV to watch. You don't have, like, radio. You don't have, like, magazines or anything. So Junior was really entertaining. I was just getting pissed when guys like Tom Lawler or, or the other two or five were drinking because, like, if they drink, like, the night before, the day after they wouldn't train, so I would like to have like one train partner or last to train with. So that was the only thing. Like the lightweights, I didn't really care. They could have get hammered like every single day. I wouldn't care. <laughs> uh, you said uh, a after the picks were taking place that um, you were a little bit upset that No Garrett didn't take you with his first pick. Did that was that something that motivated you throughout? Well, like uh, it's not like I get pissed because No Garrett didn't pick him as a uh, first pick or he didn't pick in first seat. The problem was, like, the day before, when you had the, fight, the first fight to get in the house, uh, it sounds like you know, here and we had a conversation, and Mir said, uh, don't worry about it, I don't want to take Mbini, because I know you guys are Brazilians, I know you want to take Mbini. And uh, so, you know, came and told me that, so, like, no, I'm taking it for my team for sure, I want it to be on my team, I know you're going to win the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I was like, I expect him to be on his team. It's not like I want him to be on his team. I just said, like, I don't really care. I didn't, I didn't really care about teams. I didn't really care about like, camera attention. I was there just to get my contract. I could be like in you Nogueira's know, team and maybe fight a teammate, like in the final, semi final, whatever. So, you know, teams for me to be on the, didn't really matter, like on that show. But I was expecting to be on his team because he told me that. It's not like I want it, but he told me. So that's why I kind of got disappointed. Uh, I know previously you have uh, an experience with uh, Kristoff, right? You guys have trained together before and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, Kristoff, he used to train uh, at Team Quest. You're like former like teammates, and he used to be like roommates too. But you're never like we're like close friends. You never hung out together or anything like that. Uh, 
did it help just having someone like that there that you kind of knew though? I was I was excited when we both got in the show and uh, like it's a good opportunity for both of us. At that time we were like playing for the same team, so that would be great for our team too. But as I say, we never like friends. We never like really close. Just like teammates and like roommates. <laughs> so you know, for the for the true MMA fans that know a whole bunch about your uh, your background and stuff like that. Um, do you think uh, training with Nogueira would have helped you out? Because we all know that your uh, credentials for jiu-jitsu are, are one of the top notch. But uh, do you think it would help you out a lot in terms of training with Nogueira? Um, that's the thing. Like, I don't know if that would make much difference if I train with Nogueira or not. Because like, Frank Mee is a jiu-jitsu guy too. He's a jiu-jitsu black belt as well. And uh, he just has a different game. And all the like, Brazilian guys, like, uh, plus you had like, Robert Drysdale as a, like, a stink coach. So it doesn't make, it doesn't make much difference have like Drysdale or Nogueira. Actually, like, Jiu-Jitsu wise, I think like Drysdale is a better grappler than Ogier. So Cool. Um, do you have any final things that you want to say before we let you go? Uh, I just want to thank my sponsors, uh, Pro and Mixed Martial Arts, Combat Closing, and then our sports. And thank you guys for the chance like to be like talking a little bit about me, about the show, and that's it. <laughs>